Hello, Edward here. In this session, we're going to actually go a little bit behind the scenes to see how Xeros is handling controlling multi-cell fixtures. Um, by multi-cell fixture, we mean a fixture or device that has multiple different light sources that can be controlled individually. A prime example of that are these LED buttons. Uh, LED button, these particular LED buttons that I've got along the back of the stage uh, have 10 individual pixels each, and therefore one fixture actually has 10 light sources that can be controlled separately. And that's what we call a multi-cell fixture. Now, depending on what multi-cell fixture you're using, it could be all sorts of different shapes and sizes and could be controlled in multiple different ways. A good example of that is some multi-cell fixtures will just simply have the individual light outputs having their own dimmer. And that's all fairly straightforward and easy. But some multi-cell fixtures will have an intensity for every single pixel, intensity for every single cell, but then also a master intensity as well that governs the overall intensity of the light. And so you can get into situations where you've got all sorts of different intensities scaling one another because you can have the intensity level of the cell itself, which is then scaled by the master intensity of the fixture. And something Xeros tries to do is avoid all of that confusion. It tries to avoid that confusion because when you've got intensities scaling other intensities, that's going to cause you problems for when you're just simply bringing the fixture on in intensity, but also cause you problems when you're fading between cues in a cue stack. So where possible, Xeros tries to avoid you getting into a situation where you've got a master intensity scaling a cell intensity. So how does it do that? Well, let's bring out, bring down this lighting state and let's actually use a good example um, using some real fixtures in this show file. So um, in this example, let's go and grab uh, 103 through 106 and turn these fixtures on. And I'm actually going to go and focus in on those in capture. Now, when you turn your fixtures on, by default, what your console is doing is turning all of the cells on. And in fact, if your fixture does have individual cell intensities and also a master intensity, Xeros will lock the master at full. Essentially, we'll lock it at full. You won't be able to adjust it. And if you want to turn all of the cells of your fixture on, just like I've done here, I've gone and said 103 at at, the fixture uh, the Xeros will turn all of the cells on at once. So instead of those cells already being on and just having a master that brings them all up and down, the master is locked at full. And then when you bring a fixture up, you're actually bringing up all of the intensities simultaneously. It's a similar case for color. Some fixtures will have master color controls and then individual color controls for every cell. On Xeros, to avoid any confusion, you, when you tap red, are actually changing the cell, every single one of your cells to red at once. You're not controlling a master red parameter if your fixture has one. When you tap red, you're actually telling all of the individual cells to go red rather than a master red channel if your fixture has one. Um, so in this case here, it keeps things nice and simple because it means when it comes to intensity, you go 103 at at, all your fixtures come on. If you go to 103.5 at at, just that cell will come on. And it means that then if you were to go and say 103 at 50 enter, it takes all of those cells to 50% nice and easily. Um, if you do indeed get into the situation where you've actually gone and said uh, 0.1 at uh, 25 enter, you've then gone and said uh, 0.3 at 75 enter, and you've spent quite a bit of work getting it all set to how you want it, um, you can scale all of the levels down still. 
So it's not like you've lost any functionality by the master parameter being locked at full. Because what you can say is you can go and say 103 dot enter to select all of those fixtures. And if you want all of those levels down by 50%, you could actually use the syntax at minus 50 enter to bring all of those levels down by 50%. So there's no functionality loss, but what it does mean is you avoid this situation of having a, having a master intensity scaling individual cells. As you'll see, if you uh, have multiple cells at different intensities, uh, when you just simply uh, deselect the fixture or just select the fixture as a whole, you will get a little dot next to that fixture number to indicate that uh, next to the intensity percentage, sorry, to indicate that not all cells are at the same level. Uh, now you might be thinking, okay, well, actually, I do want to be able to access the master intensity of my light. And in some cases, with some fixtures, you may need to. And so what you can do is you can go into setup, you can go and select your particular multi-cell fixture you have, uh, and within here, you have a cell intensities option. By default, cell intensities only is selected, but you can say master intensities only or master and cells. So if you enable, so I'm gonna go and grab all of these fixtures and enable the master and the cells. And this is the problem I was talking about in terms of ending up with things scaling one another. Because what now happens is if I were to go and say 103, at at, you'll see that if I then go dot enter to break that fixture into its cells, I've got a individual intensity for every cell plus this extra master intensity. If I were to now go and say at 50 enter for my cells, and I were then to go and say 103 at 50 enter, I've then got scaling because I've got the cells are at 50%, but then the master is telling them to go to 50% of that. So this is where you can get into the world of having uh, intensities scaling your cells. So by default, we try to avoid that by disabling that option. But if needed, you can access the master intensity control by enabling the master intensities. Uh, another option is actually to just go masters. You may have multi-cell fixtures in your rig that you never need to adjust the individual cells, the, the intensities of the individual cells. So to keep your life, make your life easier, you can just have a master. The cells you don't adjust, you'll just simply control the intensity of the master fixture. And of course, you can still go in and actually change the color of your fixtures in the same way if you want to. You can eat, still even do go and grab all of those controls at once. And if you need to, you can still use 103.5 enter syntax to just grab one particular cell. The difference is though, you can't adjust the intensities of individual cells if in setup, you have set your fixtures to master intensities only. But in some cases, if you've got your fixture, you know, it's been patched in a multi-cell mode, but actually you don't want to control that fixture multi-cell, a classic example would be an LED wash that has multiple rings or multiple pixel control and you don't actually want that. Uh, make your life easier, disable the cell intensities by saying master intensities only. Uh, the default though is indeed cell intensities only so that you don't need to worry about this idea of a master parameter. Um, so. As I mentioned, if your fixture does have a master color control as well as cell color control, the cell color control is the one that you'll be using. If you did need to access the master color controls, you would be able to do that by selecting the fixture. And if your fixture did have separate master controls, you could page through and the parameters would be displayed in brackets. Now, in my case here, my fixture doesn't have any uh, master controls only. So I can just see all of the fixtures parameters as I would normally. But if your fixture has additional master color control, so a master RGBW as well as an RGBW per cell, 
if you did need to access that, that would be living in the color attribute just as you would expect, but it would have the, the parameter names would be in brackets on your encoder wheels. Now, Xeros knows what cells affect one another and what parameters of cells affect one another. And it uses that logic for things like move on dark and parking. So for example, if I were to go and say uh, 93, 93.5, uh, let's come out of that, 93.5 at at, I've just grab, grabbed an individual pixel. The actual pixel controls, the controls that that actual pixel has is just color mixing and its intensity. But the physical beam of light can be affected by the fixtures pan and tilt. And therefore you can still access the pan and tilt controls within the position attribute because Xeros knows which parameters are affect which cells. And that logic it uses for move on dark and things like park. For example, if you park a cell, you're going to be parking every parameter that affects that cell, not just the parameters that live in that cell. So if I were to park RGB, if I were to park this cell, I wouldn't just be parking color, I would also be parking the pan and tilt of the fixture because the pan and tilt affect that cell. So I hope you've, that's been useful as a bit of a behind the scenes of what's going on with multi-cell on Xeros. The aim is to make multi-cell fixture control as similar to normal fixture control. So you don't need to learn a whole new way of doing things if you've got multi-cell fixtures in your rig. So I hope this has been useful. If you do have any questions, please do get in touch and we will get back to you and uh, help you out. Thanks very much for watching.